Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and I will uh, link below for you guys a little write-up I saw about uh, longevity and leg strength. It was uh, comparing a few different studies together. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing. Work on skilling up my crafting a little bit and let's talk about this. All right, I love seeing stuff like this because it seems like the more studies we do on resistance training and weight training, the more that it appears that the benefits, the potential benefits, if it's done right, of strength training and resistance training and weightlifting, all these things that most of us love who are into fitness and into lifting, the more we study this, the more we find that they offer enormous health benefits. Where well, I'm not just talking about gaining a little bit of muscle to look better, I'm talking about absolutely enormous health benefits. It seems almost like weightlifting itself is uh, the fountain of youth. Uh, it's like the closest thing we have found to like a real life fountain of youth to reverse all these different uh, negative effects of aging. And in this particular case, uh, some studies were done. And one of the studies they did, they looked at uh, 2,070 to 79 year olds. They compared different uh, aspects of their health, different things that they measured and uh, looked at on these people. And do you know what they found? They found the strongest correlation out of all the things that they measured was the leg strength was extremely correlated to lower rates of illness in general. And when I say illness, I don't just mean colds and the flu. I'm talking everything from diabetes, heart attacks, um, aches, pains, everything. The people who had the highest leg strength lived the longest. They lived the longest. And they figured that it's some of it's asking, you know, is it correlation or causation in this particular study? Because, you know, there is correlation there, but it's kind of like what came first, the chicken or the egg? It's like, well, is it the leg strength itself that makes them healthier? Or is it the fact that people who have more leg strength are healthier already, so therefore they're just more active in general. Um, so that's kind of where it gets hard to determine, but there is at least a strong correlation there. And what I mean with, with that is people are going to be more physically active if they're having less illness also, so maybe that's a factor. But the thing is, uh, once you start throwing weight training in the mix, we know that weight training reduces all these different diseases. We have plenty of studies on that, that it reduces osteoporosis, diabetes, cancer, heart attacks, all of that, extremely measurably. So it, that does seem like in this case, due to these other variables we've been able to look at, that that is probably more the case, even though the other could affect it of, you know, obviously people who are healthy are just going to be more active and have more leg strength um, rather than the leg strength causing it. But in this case, given that we've seen all this stuff happen over the years um, in different studies and we know the pathways by which lifting does it, that it does make sense that people who have stronger legs or people who exercise their legs are going to have all these health benefits. And the reason legs were more correlated than things like grip strength, because the grip strength and things have been measured in some of these studies too, is because legs are big muscles. Anytime you train your legs, you're training pretty much the biggest muscles in your body. So if the biggest muscles in your body are the strongest, uh, then, then it makes sense that you would get the health benefits of training your muscles more so. It would be more pronounced. I mean, training your chest and biceps would still add health benefits, but not as much as training your legs. If you could only pick one of those to train, the legs would give you more longevity. They give you more health benefits. Uh, it would give you all the extra bone density, the improved insulin sensitivity, um, all these other factors that we look at uh, that, that help you with diabetes, cancer, everything else. Uh, so it really makes sense there that it is specifically the legs that has the highest correlation. Uh, the legs have the highest correlation more than some, than upper body strength does. But people need to understand upper body strength still counts. I don't want anyone to think that I'm saying that, oh, just training your legs is the, is the way to go to do all this. You would be better if you trained everything. All right, so that's the take home of this. Even though leg strength had the strongest correlation, having good grip strength, having strong arms, that's still extra muscle mass that has been trained in your body. And what they noted is that, uh, interestingly enough, leg strength is even more important than body composition. Uh, meaning people who had leg strength, even if they carried a little bit of extra fluff, uh, because normally extra body fat does affect your health negatively as well, but people who had extra leg strength, still it was more important than their body fat. It actually was a bigger factor there. So it's interesting because it does offset some of the health, benef uh, health negatives of even being overweight. It uh, doesn't completely remove them, but it can reduce them. 
Uh, and again, it makes sense when you think about the fact that you're dealing with circulating insulin and in insulin sensitivity in different tissues. Now, one of the other studies they also looked at was also fascinating. They looked at one of twins who were getting up to old age, and they measured their leg, all these different measurements, including leg strength, right? And they came back and checked them 10 years later to check all their health markers. You know what they noted? The people who had had the highest leg strength, whichever twin had the highest leg strength in the 10 years previous, when they measured all the different functions and things about them and did physicals and uh, measured everything else, they found that the ones who had the strongest leg strength a decade ago had maintained better mental faculties. They had better memory, better cognition, clearer thinking. So again, we're seeing a connection between other attributes, other things going on in your body and in your mind that directly tie into your physical activity and exercise. And again, I mean, that, that also makes sense. Who are the people who we see in old age who are the healthiest, who have the clearest thoughts? The people who are physically active, people who exercise and are physically active and in shape tend to have sharper minds as we age. It seems to slow down the deterioration of the mind. Uh, just all physical exercise does, does, but and we've always known that, that exercise and physical activity is fantastic for keeping your brain and your cognition intact. But specifically, the fact that it was noted with the leg strength, because again, you're getting a, a lot of carryover to other things in the body. Again, now you've got to look at the, all these other factors. People who tend to have better blood sugar control, which again, people who lift weights, people who lift weights are going to be less prone to things like diabetes and a lot of diabetes and a lot of these things can cloud your brain. Um, a lot of these things have been tied to it like Alzheimer's even. Uh, there seems to be uh, at least some data now saying there's an insulin sensitivity connection to Alzheimer's. Well, if that's the case, again, it makes sense why things like Alzheimer's will be staved off by being physically fit, by being athletic, by exercising. Makes perfect sense when you factor in that we know that resistance training and exercise in general, but in particular resistance training, improves insulin sensitivity. Uh, it helps blunt insulin resistance in the body. Well, if there's a factor with that with Alzheimer's, it makes perfect sense that it would help your, your brain fight off developing Alzheimer's. Uh, and it's really interesting to look at the data showing that because now we're seeing more and more the connection between the body and the mind that a healthy body can lead to a healthier mind. Improved memory, improved cognitive ability, clearer thinking, more intelligence as you get older. Uh, so again, it shows that for all aspects of quality of life, how important it is to be physically active and exercise. Uh, it helps tremendously. In fact, these people who know they had better moods, they were happier. Uh, and that's a real big take home with all of this. That's something that you have to look at and really weigh out too. You know, some people act like, oh, exercise is some drudgery they have to do. But as people get older, exercise keeps their mind sharper, keeps their memory sharper, but it gives them a better mood and makes them happier. Now that's, again, that's something that's pretty fantastic. That's pretty amazing because again, uh, it makes sense, a healthy body that hurts less that allows you to continue to do the things that you want to do for decades longer, it would make perfect sense as those people are going to be happier. People who can remember things better, who don't suffer as many problems, negative effects of aging, both mental and physical, compared to other people their age, uh, they're more likely to be happier, yeah. Because they're having less things wrong with their body and with their mind, so they've got something to be happy about. They're, they're getting to experience life more on their terms rather than degenerating like other people in their age group. So yeah, they're happier. And so that's really good news for everyone who's out there in the fitness world, everyone training, everyone exercising. Uh, that's basically telling you that, look, if you keep doing this, a lot of people start doing this when they're young. A lot of people do it because they want to look good. Uh, they want to attract people. They want to be impressive. Uh, they they want to look impressive. They want to impress people with their strength or their body or whatever reason they get into it. But the thing is, if you start doing this young and you continue it through your life, what it actually does is improve multiple uh, things about your life. I mean, the fact that all of this in the long term, that we know if you keep this up for decades, just being physically active and exercising, that it lowers your chances of cancer, diabetes, heart attack, 
stroke, osteoporosis. It helps you maintain your memory better, your cognition better as you age, and it helps you stay happier up into your 60s, 70s, and 80s. So, you know, the reality of what people are doing here, they're oftentimes doing this for a little bit of a vain reason. Uh, they're doing it sometimes for really reasons you get a little older. Older people will find amusing at times to look at that. But the truth is that the young people who start these habits are going to be so much better off in 40 or 50 years. Uh, that They're doing it for one reason, but the reality is they're going to get a dozen benefits out of it that they probably never thought of when they started. Uh, so again, that's reason enough right there to continue to encourage people to lift. But that's one reason I want to step back and say, you know, the more I see data on this, the more I look at guys... And they start training for aesthetics. And as much as I want to laugh at that and say, wow, dude, that's gay as fuck. I also know that I really shouldn't discourage that. The reason is because these people who are doing this at a young age, whatever the reason is, who gives a fuck what their motives are, they're going to be better for it in the long term. They're going to be healthier and happier 50 years from now. So, you know, if the reason they're doing it now is just to look good or for vanity, but it's going to give them a better life in the long term, I don't know. I really don't want to discourage that. If that's their only reason for doing it, I don't want to discourage it because I'm actually taking something away from those people if I do that. I would actually be doing harm. So I guess uh, my stance on that has to be, you know what? I don't care why you train. I don't care what your motivation is. I don't care what your goals are. Just get in the gym and do something. Just fucking train. It's going to be worth it to you 50 years from now. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time. And don't snap your shit up like Lane Norton.